If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to The Interview Show with Seth Goldstein on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and getflywheel.com. And welcome to another edition of the interview show. I'm Seth. I'm here with Mark um, of Stone Temple, Compo- Stone Temple Consulting. That's a mouthful there for a second there. Um, first off, before we get to talking to Mark, I wanted to have everyone go over to patreon.com slash phillytechorg. And if you guys can donate a little bit every month, that would be helpful to help us, you know, offset the cost of running the show and the servers and all that. So check that out. I'll know you. But they don't know you, where they know you from. They know you yeah. either, so where can we find you online? Well, the place where I kind of, uh, built whatever name I have for myself is on Google+. And I have over 120,000 followers there. Oh, that's all. That's not much at all. Been there since, the day, been there since day three. Um, and, you know, really invested in that network uh, for the early years and, and built, built a following there and, and built some attention. And, but these days I'm there. I'm on Twitter. Uh, just by my name, at Mark Traphagen. Uh, basically, if you Google me and you spell the last name right, you're going to find me. I am all first page on Google, Mark Trapagan, T-R-A-P-H-A-G-E-N. And it's Mark with a K. That's correct. Mm-hmm. You know, remember to do that, you, you know, because you get Mark with a C. You know, who knows what's who knows who's yeah. going to Yeah, you don't want to follow the okay. Exactly, and you also, by day, you work for Stone Temple Consulting with Eric Eng. Yes. Is it, is it Eng? Uh, Eng. 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 I yeah, and with a little, little, just a little bit of the e on the end. Uh, and, you. Know, yeah. and so um, and you do search and you do search and optimization and social media, right? Right. Uh, Stone Temple Consulting is a digital marketing agency. Uh, we work with uh, primarily major brands, uh, most of them Fortune 500 or above, and uh, things like SEO, uh, social media marketing, content marketing. Content marketing has grown for us over the last year and a half or so, and is now over 50 percent of our business. Wow, that's a lot. So we, you know, work with, uh, work with those larger companies, I say larger brands. And my primary responsibility is marketing the agency. So I always tell people I have a very meta job, you know, I market a marketing agency. Oh, so you're, 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 you're doing internal marketing, like in marketing to Temple. Right, because we built the business uh, almost entirely on what's called inbound marketing, which means we don't do outbound sales calls cold call people, we don't, you know, spam people online, yeah. we just we create great authoritative content, uh, we travel to a lot of conferences and speak, uh, Eric, one of the best-selling books on SEO, The Art of SEO, yeah, so all those things, yeah. oh great, well, you know, those uh, get people to know our authority, they know that we know what we're talking about, we used to get people talking about, it, and that's brought us our clients. Well, that's what you want to do, so, so, what, so what intrigues you about um, Google Plus, because a lot of people say it's dead. I don't think it's dead. I'm on it constantly. But what, what, uh, there's Twitter. You know, and you can't really compare Twitter to Google Plus because Twitter's 140 characters and Google Plus is as much as you want to write. But like, like let's compare Facebook to Google Plus. What, what entices you to go to Google Plus over something like Facebook? Well, the, the main difference, you know, fundamentally, whatever people tried to make out of it, um, there isn't a lot of, of mental difference and look and feel between Facebook and Google Plus. You know, obviously you have circles, but you can do lists on Facebook and things like that. But the main difference is the people that you'll find. Uh, and I think a lot of people have said this. You know, Facebook tends to be the place where we connect with people we know because everybody's there, right? We connect with friends, with family, maybe business associates, people we've met at a conference, things like that. Google Plus is well populated by a lot of very active people, a lot of very smart people. But you can kind of seek them out. It's a place to explore. Um, I started there. I didn't know anybody and just started searching for conversations, seeing what was going on that interested me, entering in. 
Now with the new communities feature, it's a lot easier to do that. You can find active communities around those topics. Get, people get to know you. They, they like what you're saying, what you're contributing to the conversations. They start circling you, following you. you know, what's, the, what's the thought process? I mean, there's the whole idea of authorship and how people could like make almost use Google Plus as their identity engine. Now they got rid of authorship, and then they're, now they're saying you don't have to use your real name on Google Plus anymore. I mean, do you see Google Plus going by the wayside a little bit, or do you think they're just evolving the product? Well, we think that they're evolving it. Um, I, I, it feels to me like they're pretty committed at this point. I think they would have, you know, started shutting it down by now. Uh, we mm -hmm. see we see signs of continued development. Now, it's true that, that last year, I would say, uh, there haven't been the kinds of big change that we used to get used to. Know. We see huge but, ones. Yeah. But they are there are still new things happen all the time. And there was a very intriguing, uh, Eric Engel, uh, my boss, wrote, uh, recently wrote a, wrote a piece for Copyboard about the future of Google+. Yeah, yeah and I saw one, that one. That was good. One of the links in that is to a intriguing interview with a Google engineer talking about Google's death in uh, AI, artificial intelligence, and the early days of that. And in that, some of the early learning, especially artificial intelligence, to help connect people of similar interests, things like that, we'll be rolling this into Google Plus over the next months. So I'm thinking about AI and Google Plus, what that going to be like. It says to you, you're still putting this investment into this. So it, it, to answer your question, it seems like to us, Google Plus is a long-term play for Google. They're impatient with it. Uh, they're not in a rush. They think it has long-term value for them. Okay, well, that's a good thing. I mean, that's what you want is them to back it up. I mean, what I liked about Google Plus is that, yeah, there was people, I knew people on Twitter. I mean, I, I knew, we knew each other before that, but like we really got to know each other on Google Plus. And I, I found new people on there that I found interesting. And I found um, that, you know, were worth talking to. And they even great business deals through Google Plus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that would never have gone otherwise. You know, it's, 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 it's not a place for most people. I wouldn't say it's a place where you're going to find and influence your direct customers you yeah. know, on Facebook or some other social networks. But for um, for, joining, uh, for for joining with other people, you know, especially if in your areas like marketing and tech, uh, there's so yeah. many. As you know, uh, there's so many smart people on Google Plus. You can uh, learn from, you know, read from, interact. Uh, you know, and just just kind of education from. Now, now you are also very active on Twitter. What what do you like about Twitter? That you know that's you know because it's its own beast. What do you yeah. like, what's your what's the calling to Twitter for you? A couple things. I've had Twitter for you know a long time, many years, but I let it in the early days when I was in Google Plus. I let my Twitter go almost completely because I was so much fun on Google Plus. And you Twitter, to forget about Twitter. It's, oh, really that's hard. Twitter too. Yeah, it's really hard to go back to the 140 character limitation you know, after you can do such great stuff on Google Plus content wise. And I like yeah. to write. But uh, I had some friends that drew me back in. I saw that they were able to use it very creatively and actually saw, you know, compare it kind of like haiku poetry. They saw the 140 uh, character limitation as an art form rather than as a, a limitation or a drawback. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing is. Uh, again, in the business world, and especially in um, startups, tech businesses, uh, marketing, all some of these different areas, um, everybody who's anybody is on Twitter. And they kind of expect you to be. And it's where you're going to, to find them. It's where you're going to find them, uh, you get, get in touch with their, their authoritative content that's interesting to you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you go to a conference, the conferences that I go to, what do they put up on the screen for you? They put up your, your Twitter handle. Um, people, every time I speak in a conference, um, my Twitter following goes up amazingly. <laughs> amazing you know, that that's works, how, yeah. that's how they keep in touch. Yeah. So how are you using these tools to promote Stone Temple Consulting? Well, again, I, I said to you, I can't uh, on camera or off camera, where I said to you that, you know, that content marketing is now, you know, over 50% of our business. I mean, that's what our clients think. And the reason that we're so effective at that is we know how to we done it ourselves. So we start with the content. The content comes out of a strategy. We start with, you know, knowing in depth what our brand is, what it's about, what do we want to stand 
the marketplace. What do we want people to think of when they think Stone Temple Consulting? Or when they think of that thing, they're going to think Stone Temple Consulting. So we mm -hmm. then build content, authoritative content around that that shows off our expertise, our knowledge, our ability in the area. Uh, we try to be on the, the you know, cutting edge of that. And then social is the place where we get to share that out and make connections uh, with people who will be interested in that contact, will, that content will spread the reach of it. Uh, it's, been, it's been very, very effective for us. Uh, now, one thing I want to emphasize quickly to your audience is that that strategy takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. It mm -hmm. takes, takes dedication, uh, keeping in the early days, and nobody's listening to uh, get that get enough content out there and start building the audience around it. That uh, but one day, if you keep doing it, and if you, you know your stuff, and if you've got something valuable for people, it starts to take off. If you build it, they will come. If you build it right, and you keep at it. Build it right. That's the key. If you build it right, they will come. Exactly. So, Mark, thank you so much for being on the show. Where, so, where can people find you? Your plus, your plus, spell your last name again, Mark, plus yeah, Mark. Just, just look up uh, Mark Trapagan on Google+. Plus. I'm at Mark Trapagan on Twitter. I'm also pretty active on LinkedIn. Again, you can just look for my name there. Awesome. Well, thank you for being on the show. And everyone, go go friend him up. Go. Get, he's very accessible. He's very friendly. He doesn't bite. You know. So go chat with him. He'll share his knowledge with you. I'm sure. And thank you for being on the show. Seth, it was a good time. I love talking with. You. Thanks for having awesome. me. Awesome.